going to call this uh, short video Odds and Ends, where we're going to look at a plate amp, and we're going to get another little look at that old 1940 uh, Philco radio. Let's check it out. So today I'm working on an SVS Bash amplifier from a subwoofer. And this was uh, picked up by a client who bought it in a non-working state. So he's wanting to see whether this can be made to work. The person that he got it from just bought a new amp. So what I've done is I've hooked it up to my audio generator. I'm going to give it a 60 or 70 hertz tone. 60 hertz tone. That should activate the power supply and we'll see whether we get any juice out of the power supply on this thing. So I'm going to grab my meter. Because these use units you typically, uh, the power supply will, be, will turn off when there's no input. So we'll connect the meter up to the power supply and see whether this thing's going to put out any power. Okay, we'll turn on the power to the unit itself. We'll see that we've got about 8 volts coming out of the power supply, which is obviously too low, but I haven't turned on the audio source. I hooked up one channel of this just to my speaker so I can hear it run. Okay, power supply is coming up to 20 odd volts now, 35, 45. Power supply is building. But I think it should be a lot higher than that for this unit. But I'm just going to take a look and see if there's any actual output coming from this amplifier right now. Okay, let's turn the power on. That does sound like it is making my speaker work, doesn't it? Oh, that's good for the so woofer. The amplifier is putting out a signal. I don't want to blow my speaker. This is obviously not a, a subwoofer that I'm using. I'm just using one of my bench speakers. But it is definitely working on that low frequency of 60 hertz. We can take this down lower. Now obviously I don't want to drive this thing too hard because there's no heat sink. These transistors are going to get hot very quick if I put any type of power through this thing. I just want to test it and see whether the amplifier is actually working. So I'm just hooking up an 8 ohm uh, 50 watt wire wound resistor so that I can put my scope on here. I just want to take a look at what the signal looks like coming out of the amplifier and we'll see how how bad or how good it is Again, I don't want to uh, run this thing without a heat sink. Oh, this resistor's getting hot too. <laughs> We're putting some serious power out this thing for a few seconds there, but it was uh, showing some fairly nasty distortion there initially as I started to ramp up the power. Let's just try a different frequency on this thing. So at 120 hertz, yeah, oh yeah, this resistor is getting hot real quick. This amplifier is actually putting out power and the transistors are warming up pretty quick without uh, a heat sink. I think this amplifier works, you know that? I think this thing is working at that really low 20 hertz. There was a, a fair bit of distortion there, but uh, that uh, also could be just the due to the, the frequency at the cutoff there. Just see here where the uh, the adjustments here are. This thing's got a crossover on it. Also, keep in mind that I do not have a speaker on it. I have a resistive load. It's got a filter on it too. And the uh, amp is going to be looking for an inductive load. 
with dampening for the speaker voice coil, which is not present. I was below the 25 hertz for the cutoff. That might be the filter that was causing that when I was down at 20 hertz. It's certainly, it's certainly not doing it when I crank the power up uh, at 120 hertz. So we'll just hit it with a, an 80 hertz tone here. Again, I gotta be real quick. I'm just, I'm just monitoring the temperature of these transistors because without a heat sink, these things are gonna, as I say, go nuclear very quickly. So I have to really be, really be quick. My uh, resistor here is just with the short bursts of power I've been putting through this thing. I've got this 50 uh, watt resistor to the point where I can't even touch it. It's so hot. So we know that this amp is putting out power. Uh, what what are we looking at here setting wise? I'm on the uh, times 10 setting on my my scope. So if we take a look at the voltage that I'm going to get out of this thing, if my scope probe would stay connected without all the wires falling off. So this is times 10. So this is on the 2 volt range. So every division is 20 volts that we see on here. Let's take a look at what type of output. Okay. So So I'm taking it down to here. 20, 40, 60. 8100 about 120 volts is the power that this thing's putting out that's some pretty serious power and the the uh, DC power as I crank it up goes up to 80 volts well in the time that I had the the amp running there I'm going to give this back to the guy that owns it so that he can actually hook it up to a, a subwoofer and get the heat sink on. He got the he got the amp from somebody else, and that's how he received it. So he's wanted me to kind of check it out, but it does appear to be working. So let's look at the next odd and end for this video, and we're going to go back to that 1940 Philco radio from the 1940 Ford. So here's the unit. Again, um, I've got the front nose piece off now we're trying to figure out how to get that volume control the guy that owns it's actually with me here and um, if you look when i move my hand you'll see the tuning slugs to set the presets i'm trying to figure out which screws come out to to actually uh, release the volume control uh, because he wants to change the switch anyway five presets there's the tuning slugs for it and it's switched with that uh, that white button and what he wants to do is he wants to re replace the drums on this because they're they're shot and he wants to replace the power switch um because he wants to sell the radio he doesn't have the car for it he's got actually got an older car and he's got i think his 32 is what he's driving but he had a 40 and this radio he was telling me he's had this radio sitting in his garage for 60 years he bought this radio 60 years ago it's 80 year old radio 1940. So he's had this radio sitting in his garage for 60 years and he finally decided it was time to sell it to a collector and he's wanted to make sure that it works. That's why we changed out four capacitors in it. The snubber capacitor was also changed on the um, on the vibrator. That was changed. But we're just trying to figure out how to get into this, uh, into this unit here to uh, change the power switch. And uh, once uh, we get a new power switch on it, you'll see it again and uh, that'll get changed. And then he was going to sell the unit. So that's the story on this radio here. Anyway, there's the five presets. That's the end of this little odds and ends video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.